नाव श्री शांताराम नायक ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ बोथ दिल्स आर लाउडेबल द फर्स्ट वन आई एम मैं सेकेंड वो विल द फर्स्ट द ऑब्जेक्टिव बेसिक ऑब्जेक्टिव इंसराइन इन द ऑब्जेक्ट रीजन स्टेटमेंट मंत्री जी जरा ध्यान दीजिए मैं मैं कॉल द अटेंशन ऑफ मिनिस्टर so object is laudable uh, because as it says india intends to accede to the international labor organizations instrument c186 known as maritime labor convention 2006 the bill provides for living and working conditions of seafarers including their food accommodation medical care repatriation social security and recruitment आपने अगर इफ यू हैव चेंज द नेम टू सी फेयर फ्रॉम सी पर्सन दैट इज ऑल्सो वेलकम यू आर सेड दैट यू आर रेफरिंग टू द सी फेयर एज सी पर्सन बट आई डोंट थिंक इट मैंशन हियर अनलेस यूर अमेंडमेंट इज देयर ओके ओके नाउ सेकेंड बिल कंटेन्स रिगार्डिंग द एजर्डस पेंट विच इज पुट इन द शेप एंड इफ एज पर द इंटरनेशनल नॉर्म्स the paint is going to be changed that is also welcome now sir with respect to this mercantile bill several issues regarding sea farers who go on ship because goa is being a coastal state just like kerala many people go on board the ships and their problems are tremendous they are being solved one by one stage by stage by respective government and we had this bill prepared earlier also now basic problem is regarding hijacking of ship because these young boys put their life in danger especially when they go via somalia and that that region sea farers have remained in the custody of hijackers for months together suffered humiliation torture etc etc and thereafter ways and means have been found by various countries international bodies have come together various countries have to come together to protect the ships whenever they are being attacked and therefore it is the duty of the respective country also the shipping company and the government of india to come together and be alert when hijacking takes place i have seen many times the director of shipping also is not much concerned they must contact the families tell them the status of the crew or the seafarers because if you tell the status they feel consoled if nobody bothers and nobody is going to pass information it hurts them that despite having gone there because of earning of the livelihood on the ships if nobody cares their feelings get get hurt therefore in the matter of hijacking they the government of india and the companies must come forward if you see that there is a track record from 2005 it has taken place now sums as much as thousands of dollars are claimed as are asked as ransom i got a whole list in major countries the usa russia they go out of way and they pay ransom for some countries that ransom is not is too much to be paid and therefore in sub circumstances some policy has to be worked out so that we get those ships released give relief to seamen and to the families i have got a whole of list of ships from hong kong kenya liberia us taiwan denmark russia being hijacked from time to time so this hijacking of ships is a serious subject which the ministry of shipping has to tackle on war footings i don't think everywhere you can come to the rescue because sometime ministry of shipping also director of shipping also finds helplessness in uh tackling the situation but 
if international help is coming, so that I heard in, in recent times, some countries place their ships in position so that hijacker don't have a scope to attack those ships. Such things have taken place. And so for more and more countries, if they join this international force of protecting ships, I think that can help. Secondly, sir, pension has always been, pension for seafarers has always been an issue. Who is to pay? The stand sometimes is taken. We are not an employer. The company is the employer. And therefore, it is between the company and the seafarers to solve the pension issue. But I think here, the, some scheme has to be worked out. Not by necessarily by company, but by the state and central government. Some funding has to be put in a common pool so that in case of emergency, this fund can be utilized to grant some pension relief to the seafarers. Or the contract which is entered into between company and seafarers, the government has to see, ensure that a a uh, reasonable amount of pension is provided for in the contract. This can be done, or the government of Goa, I mean, government of the state government or the central government can create an independent fund for the purpose. This proposal was there before the ministry some time back during the uh, UPA 2 regime. But the finance minister then said, we don't have sufficient funds for financing such a scheme for which we are not primarily responsible. But I think the government has to take up initiative. Then comes the question of recruitment agents. Poor people who seek jobs, they go to Bombay and other places, stays days together to get a place on board a ship. There the recruitment agents come into picture. And many places we have found, they do their activities fraudulently and cheat the people who are interested in going board the ship. Here, the recruitment agents, I don't know what is the present format, but proper, strong, foolproof registration of recruitment agents is needed. And government should, and director of, of shipping should monitor this recruitment business. Their accounts, their decision should be monitored. Not only that they, they are allowed to register and keep a register. Their activities have to be monitored. And secondly, sir, I have seen recently, as far as emigration is concerned, no emigration required is a certificate which is given by passport officer. Some years back to three years back, these certificate was given by the passport officer in Goa. That's why I'm talking of Goa now. Now, after government of India entered into agreement with Tata Consultancy for giving passport, no clause was put providing for giving no emigration certificate required to the passport officer. As a result, people have to go to Bombay to get this endorsement. So this is one of the related aspects as far as uh, seafarers are concerned. They have to go to Bombay only to get this endorsement so that uh, they are able to uh, get this endorsement. Now there is a good clause in the in the form of amended section clause 173.1 where for foreign going vessels up to a particular uh, tonnage which will be prescribed. Uh, there is a clause entered, into a very good clause. More than prescribed number of persons, the ships is going, shall have on board as part of her complement a medical officer possessing such qualification and less than the prescribed number of persons shall have such medical facility as may be prescribed in accordance with maritime labor laws. So two types of medical facility on board the ship has now been made compulsory. This has to be followed in all strictness because obviously 
सी फेरस आर बाउंड टू फॉल सीक एट स्टम्प ए अदर देर फॉर कॉम्पिटेंट मेडिकल फैसिलिटी आर रिक्वायर्ड टू बी प्रोवाइडेड फॉर मे बी सम कंपनीज वॉलेंटरली प्रोवाइड सच फैसिलिटी बट इफ द लॉ मेक्स इट कंपल्सरी सो मच द गुड अनदर थिंग इज दैट सी फेरस वेन दे लैंड से बॉम्बे कलकत्ता एनीवेयर दे हैव टू टेक द एयरलाइंस टू रीच होम नाउ आई हैव लर्न दैट इंटरनेशनल गाइडलाइंस एग्जिस्ट वेयर बाय फोर्टी फोर्टी के जी ऑफ लगेज इज अलाउड टू बी कैरीड ऑन डोमेस्टिक फ्लाइट वेन सी फेरस लैंड इन द कंट्री आई हैव लर्न दैट मोस्ट ऑफ द एयरलाइंस डू नॉट परमिट लगेज बियॉन्ड ट्वेंटी फॉर सी फेरस वायोलेटिंग गाइडलाइंस सो आई वुड अर्ज अपॉन यू टू अप्रोच the uh, air india and other companies airlines to see that these international guidelines regarding the luggage is observed by them so that so that uh, seafarers reach their destination without any problem as you know see when when some seafarer comes to the country he carries luggage for relations friend families obviously this luggage will exceed 20 kg therefore to permit them this uh, extra luggage will be a gesture on the part of airline companies so this issue although directly not related to i will urge upon you to approach the airlines authorities for the purpose thank you very much